An explosive recording has revealed that ANC top officials knew about the so-called war room. The secret media campaign was meant to discredit opposition parties in the run-up to the municipal polls. ENCA reporter Karen Morn has more on that story. She joins us live. Karen, thank you for joining us. Now, the ANC has been on the defensive since uh, revelations emerged on the so-called war room. And now an explosive recording has emerged. What does it unveil? Well, it's actually several recordings, three hours worth of them. And essentially what happened was that PR consultant Sitle Bolani brought this court action against the ANC, basically claiming 2.2 million rand in public relations services that she'd given to them during the run-up to the municipal election period, claimed that she'd been part of an organization called The War Room, um, which included people on her version like Fat Joe, the 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 DJ and a number of other individuals where they would essentially reinforce positive messages about the ANC but also go for the jugular on particularly the EFF and the DA um, and there was this allegation the most serious of all of them that there would be doctored posters produced to depict Julius Malema wielding a firearm and suggesting that he was in the words of uh, Sitle Bolani somewhat of a lunatic so of course huge denials from the ANC basically saying no that Sitle Bolani was a volunteer that there was a miscommunication about what exactly her role was um, you know a sort of distancing that the ANC would never do anything that would violate the electoral code etc etc now we have these series of recordings um, in which the ANC GM the general manager Ignatius Jacobs who's the same person who signed a document on an ANC letterhead saying, well, we'll pay you, uh, Sitle Bolani, one million rand for your services, is now heard on recordings saying things um, that suggest that he knew exactly what this particular group of people were planning to do. He at one point speaks about, you know, I know all about propaganda and subterfuge um, and spy tactics, etc. And I know what needs to be done. But I was, uh, I put that in the hands of Shaka Sisulu um, and Joseph and Kadaming, and and because of resources they haven't delivered. So that is the most serious thing about all of this because. Um, while we all know and understand that in an election environment um, you are going to do whatever you can to score points against your opposition, um, where it starts going over the lines of legality is producing fake posters and doing things which are seen to suggest that Julius Malema is inciting violence when in fact that is not the case. And what, what does this now mean for the ANC as a whole? We've heard them, they've been very vocal, being on the defensive throughout the week. And now that these recordings have surfaced, what was the impact there? I think there's going to be a massive fallout, and there has to be, because um, Ignatius Jacobs is the general manager of the ANC. These recordings show that he had multiple meetings with Tietle Borlani. Um, I think it's also very serious for Shaka Sisulu and Joseph and Kadaming, um, because the recordings show that uh, Ignatius Jacobs was questioning uh, Joseph and Kadaming about this big issue of the 50 million rand, which of course was the issue that grabbed the headlines. He says, where is this coming from, this 50 million rand? And um, we hear Joseph and Kadameng say, well, we were hoping to raise that, but we didn't reach our target. So the ANC categorically and uh, Shaka Sisuli as well saying, what's this 50 million rand? We know nothing of it. These recordings show that that is not necessarily the truth. Um, and that's very problematic. I mean, the discourse around the story has been somewhat misleading because, you know, people have this impression that the ANC was going to fund this campaign for 50 million rand. They weren't. But the name of the ANC, from what we know, from these court documents, from these recordings, was being leveraged to get people to sponsor a 50 million rand campaign designed ultimately at discrediting the opposition um, and also, you know, bolstering the image of the ANC. And the ANC has come out of this thing looking somewhat ham-fisted, somewhat desperate, and some may argue borderline illegal. So these, going back to those um, alleged plans to fake the opposition posters, I mean, you mentioned EFF leader Julius Malema wielding a gun. I mean, what was said in those recordings in the lead-up to plans to plot those posters? Well, 
He doesn't overtly mention the posters. He says, you know, I know what it's, you know, what's required. Um, very much indicates in the recordings that this is going to be about targeting the EFF and the DA. Um, there is a dispute over the posters. The EFF has produced a poster which they say they were forced to take down off the streets of Santon um, at the heart of the elections, but they had no idea who was responsible and so they couldn't make a complaint. They're now considering their legal options and going to the IEC to see say this was a violation of the Electoral Act. Um, but, you know, from the, the discourse that's provided by Ignatius Jacobs, he doesn't give the impression that this is a yay ANC festive campaign where we're just going to put out positive messages and everyone's going to love us. He talks about this negative aspect, the spycraft, the subterfuge. Also, what's very interesting is that he talks about the fact that in the media space, the ANC is terrible. That's the word he uses. And he also describes like the, the media, particularly the print media, as very ra ra racist um, and has a lot of discourse to talk about the Guptas, for instance. And he can't understand why the Guptas are so fixated upon when um, they made, on his version, 10 billion rand from the Glencore deal when Glencore made so much more money. And he said, you know, they're talking about state capture and they're talking about Jacob Zuma as a bad guy, et cetera, et cetera. So apart from the obvious kind of issues of legality around potentially creating fake posters, apart from the, the weird and desperate way in which the ANC tried to claw back some sense of um, media push and did so in a, a very strange way that's revealed, there's also this, this kind of insight into how the party thinks about the media and how it, on the version of Ignatius Jacobs, who is the general manager of the party, um, on his version is is quite terrible at managing those perceptions um, and and managing the message that they want to put out there. Some interesting developments to come. Thank you so much for your time. That was uh, ENCA reporter Karen Morn.